This is Lesson 6-2, Properties of a Parallelogram. Let's first start with just the definition of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, because it has four sides, is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Okay, so both, it's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. What are opposite sides? Opposite sides are like AD and BC, so opposite, opposite sides do not share a vertex, opposite angles do not share a side, and consecutive angles share a side. And those two will be important for the properties of a parallelogram. So for right now, AD is parallel to BC, and you can see that they're parallel by the markings, and AB is parallel to CD. So it's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now there's five properties that the parallelogram has. And we'll start with the first one. Properties of a parallelogram. First off, just by the definition, the opposite sides are parallel. So opposite sides are parallel to each other. The second property is the opposite sides are congruent. So if we look at the picture right here, AD is congruent to BC, and AB is congruent to CD. So AB is congruent to CD. They each have one little slash mark, and BC is congruent to AD. Now we'll use this property to solve equations um, with parallelograms to find a missing side, but we'll also use it in proofs, and we're going to do a proof showing that the opposite sides are congruent. All of these properties can be proved. Okay, so the second one is opposite sides are congruent. Third one, if we look at the picture here, we can already guess what it would be. Third one is the opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle D. Opposite angles are congruent. Again, this is another property that we can prove um, with congruent triangles. Fourth one, consecutive angles are supplementary. Now, opposite angles were across from each other, like A and C. Consecutive angles are the angles that are right next to each other, like A and B are consecutive, A and D are consecutive. So consecutive angles are supplementary. Angle A plus angle B equals 180. Angle B plus angle C equals 180, angle C plus angle D equals 180, and angle D plus angle A equals 180. So my consecutive angles are supplementary. And that actually makes sense because remember that BC and AD were parallel, so this line AB is a transversal, so A and B are really just um, same side interior angles, and remember those were supplementary. So consecutive angles are supplementary. The last property, if we look at the picture, we can figure out, look at those diagonals. If I were to connect B to D and A to C, the diagonals bisect each other. So the diagonals bisect each other. So AE is congruent to EC, and BE is congruent to DE. Okay, so the diagonals bisect each other. AE is congruent to CE, and BE is congruent to DE. And again, we're going to use all these properties to solve missing sides or missing angles or parts of diagonals. We can set up equations, so we're going to practice all of that. But each one of them can also be proved by proving the triangles are congruent. So we're going to do a proof of the opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so the proof of opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. So I'm given then this is my little symbol for parallelogram right here. I'm given that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. By definition of a parallelogram, my opposite sides are parallel. I want to prove that A, B is congruent to C, D, and I want to prove that B, C is congruent to D, A. So my first step is my given. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. I could have used the symbol. I just wrote it out in words instead. So I know that it's a parallelogram because it's given. Now what does a parallelogram have? A parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. So AB is parallel to CD, and BC is parallel to DA. And that's the definition of a parallelogram, is that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. 
Now if they're parallel, then that diagonal AC is like a transversal. So because of that, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 because they're alternate interior angles, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because they're alternate interior angles. So if the lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. And that's the reason for step 3. AC is my transversal. 1 and 4 are alternate interior angles. 2 and 3 are alternate interior angles. So right now I have two um, pairs of angles congruent. All I need is a side, and I actually have this side right here that they share. I'm trying to prove ABC, triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle CDA, which is down here. Like I said, they share side AC. If AC is congruent to AC, that's my reflexive property. Now you're marking your diagram as you go along. I now have angle side angle, so I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by angle side angle. And remember, once my triangles are congruent, all the corresponding parts are congruent. So now my opposite sides are corresponding parts in the triangles. AB is congruent to CD, and BC is congruent to DA. And this we would just write CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's a proof of opposite sides in a parallelogram are going to be congruent to each other. We already wrote it as one of our properties, but this is showing you proof that it actually is true by proving the triangles are congruent. And we can do the same thing to prove the opposite angles are congruent or the diagonals bisect each other. Let's try a problem with um, trying to find some missing diagonals here. Okay, so I want to solve a system of linear equations to find the values of x and y. And I want to find out what km and ln are. Now we know from one of our properties that the diagonals bisect each other. So kp is congruent to mp, and lp is congruent to np. So the diagonals bisect each other. So I set up an equation, and I actually this is going to be a system of equations, but y plus 10, which is kp, equals 2x minus 8, which is pm. And lp, which is x, equals y plus 2. So the diagonals bisect each other, and I set up equations for each of those diagonals. Now the problem is solving this. Okay, I'm going to leave that up to you to try and make an attempt. Remember, we use substitution. I can't solve an equation that has two variables in it. So I'm going to substitute. So take this first equation, and in place of x, I want you to substitute y plus 2 and see if you can get an answer for that. Okay, and we'll finish looking at that tomorrow. And that's it for today.